What's up everybody, today I'm going to be doing a um, to read through the library horror stories with rain sounds by, I forgot what their name is, how to go look, let me see, I forgot the name, Nighttime Spooks, and I, of course you remember me doing these a long time ago, and I haven't reacted to any of these in such a long time, so I thought today would be a great day. And I probably only do one of these for it today because I had to edit and I finally got a new editing um um app so I could uh so the video will look a little bit cooler. So I can't wait to see so y'all that oh, my head looks awful. I don't know why it looks flat, it looks horrible right now. But anyways uh, let's get into this video and let's go. Hope everyone has a good day today. When I was a kid, we lived only a few blocks away from the local library. We went there all the time, and even though I'm not a huge reader, I would tag along with my parents or siblings. So when I turned 16 and I needed a job, I was offered one there. The librarians already knew me pretty well and were looking for some extra help. Everyone there was really nice, so I knew it would be a good job for me. The library itself, I would say, was pretty average size. There was an adult section, a children's section, and then many other categories within those. My main job there was just to organize books. I would put books back on the shelves that had recently been returned, and I would also sort the books and help out with anything else that was needed. For the first month or so of the job, I got the hang of it pretty quick. I enjoyed it a lot, and for the most part, it was easy. Occasionally, I would work later in the day and past closing time. We closed most days at 8 p.m., and I would stay late to help organize things. One time, I was in a smaller section in the corner of the music books area. It was just me and Jen, who was basically my boss. She was in her office working at her desk doing computer work. I began working in that music area about 10 minutes after we closed, and when I got done with it, I was pretty sure I would be able to leave. But still, I took my time because I wanted to do a good job. I remember right in the middle of this, I heard a book fall to the ground a few shelves over. Now, I was at the farthest back shelf mm -hmm. in that particular area, and this That'd was a gone. smaller, more enclosed section of the building. When I first heard it, I thought that a book must have been placed too close to the edge and finally fell. Nobody was supposed to be here after all. I walked a few aisles up and located the book that had fallen. Then, I picked it up and put it back where it belonged on the shelf. As I did this, I thought I heard something in the next aisle over. You did it was it the sound of somebody something. walking. Now this creeped me out. I was startled for a moment before deciding it had to be Jen. I asked, Jen, are you over here? Nobody answered. Let I didn't know why Jen here. would come over here anyways. She knew the task that I was doing, and I didn't need any help. I went back over to my cart of books I had been pushing and putting back on the shelves. It was now almost empty at this point. I tried to finish up as fast as I could now, because I was a little bit creeped out. Not more than two minutes went by, and I heard another noise. This time... It sounded as though somebody was loudly walking towards me. I was hoping that it was just Jen for some reason, but I likely knew that that wasn't the case. Finally, the footsteps stopped in the next aisle over from where I was. Mm -hmm. I could barely see somebody on the other side between the books, but I couldn't tell any details about them. I stopped what I was doing and listened. Whoever was there was just standing there on the other side. Then I saw the bookshelf separating us from each other. It was moving. And then I realized that it was going to fall over right onto me. I jumped back and basically dove to the ground as the bookshelf came crashing down. Books fell off the shelf and scattered everywhere as this happened. I just barely made it before the large bookshelf hit me. I was hit with several books though. When the dust settled, I was surrounded by books with several on top of me. I was lucky to have escaped getting crushed by the giant bookshelf. Yeah, I looked will. up to see a woman standing there a ways back staring at me. Mm -hmm. I had no idea who she was. She was staring right at me with an angry look. Then she began to approach me. 
I told the woman to get away from me and I was going to call the police. She didn't say anything though and just kept walking closer. I grabbed a book next to me and held it up as if I was going to throw it at her. She paused momentarily and then kept walking. I then fired the book at her, striking her in the shoulder. I picked up another and said she needed to leave, but she didn't seem to care. She kept approaching. That's when I saw Jen walk around the corner and come into view. She said something like, what on earth is going on here? I screamed for help and said that the woman was trying to kill me. The woman who had been walking towards me then turned around and began walking over to Jen. Jen yelled at her to get away and I saw her pulling out her phone to call the police. The woman then turned and ran in the opposite direction. Unfortunately, that direction did not lead to an exit. It did allow me and Jen to run away from the area though and we hid in her office with the door locked. The police arrived a short time later. They located the woman who was hiding in another section of the library. I'm not sure what that woman's problem was or if there was something wrong with her, but I'm really glad that Jen walked in at the time that she did. For some reason, that woman seemed to want to hurt me. I worked at that library for almost a year total, and this was by far the scariest thing to ever happen. MPB, the platform for used photo and video kit. Change gear. Your meatball calzone. Could you throw it in the back? Slotsky calzones. They even taste big. No. Okay, that's dark. I'm a female and do quite a bit of reading. Books have always been a big part of my life, and I will read almost any topic. I believe that this love for reading started back when I was a kid and would often go to the library. I lived within a walking distance away from one, and this was before smartphones and tablets, so the library was a big deal. Well, this story takes place way back in the very early 2000s. At the time, I had only recently gotten my first apartment and was still a regular at my local library. I would go probably two or three times a week on average. The library that I went to was pretty big and the most popular one in the city that I lived in. It all started one time when I went to the library like any other. Recently to this, there was a certain series of books that I was reading. I had just finished the fourth book of the series and went to the library to get the fifth among a couple of other things. After I left the library that day and went home, I started reading the book that night. However, when I got to page 20, I noticed something. There was writing in pen in the middle between one of the paragraphs where there was a little bit of open space. The writing said hi to me and use my first name. It then said that they hope I liked this book as much as the others in the series. I thought this had to be a coincidence and a crazy one at that. But my name, which I prefer not to mention, is not all that common. It's not unheard of, but it's just not that popular either. I really didn't know why anybody would write in a book like this and it was certainly strange, but I still considered it to be a coincidence. I went on reading it, and a couple of days later, I found another note in the book. It said, this is my favorite part of the book. Reminds me of you. The next paragraph was talking about a woman's long curly hair. At this time, I happened to have long and curly hair as well. When I read that part, it really made me think for a minute. Could this person be writing to me? Was somebody at the library watching me? Like I mentioned, it was a big library, and I yeah, guess it could be very possible, you. but I also felt like I would notice if anybody was staring at me. The next time I went back to the library was about a week later. When I went there, I was more careful to look around. I didn't notice anybody in particular that seemed out of the ordinary. Sure, I saw people glance at me here and there, but there was no way to detect if their glances were just normal or if they knew me. Nothing stood out as unusual. About two more weeks went by, and I visited the library multiple times with nothing strange happening. But then I rented a few more items from the library. I got a few books and a VHS tape. At the time, VHS was popular, and at that library you could rent some videos. Not nearly as many as places like Blockbuster, but certainly some. Well, I had been renting a series of movies. They were a version of a different book series that I had read several months before. When I got back from the library, I played the movie that same night. When I put the tape in though, I didn't see what I was expecting to. There was no movie on it. Instead, it was a weird type of home video. I recognized that the first clip was of me. It was me in the library reading. It appeared that whoever had took this video was pretty far away and had zoomed in a decent amount. The clip went on for maybe 20 seconds or so, and then the tape went black. Then, it picked up again, now showing what I recognized as my apartment building. 
It was nighttime, and this was also very zoomed in, so it was a little bit blurry. Still, I could see the parking lot, and it showed me walking in the parking lot and then going inside. The clip kept going for a few seconds and then stopped. I couldn't watch any more after that, and I turned it off and took the tape out. Now I knew somebody was stalking me. The next day, I went to the library and told them everything. Then I went to the police. The library told me that there wasn't much they could do. Security cameras weren't as common or as good quality back then, and I knew they wouldn't be able to watch every person in there like a hawk. The police told me that they would look into it, and I made a police report. However, I didn't feel all that much better knowing that whoever was doing this was still out there. Obviously, I tried to stay away from that library. I kept a close eye on my surroundings wherever I was, and I tried to leave my apartment as little as possible. I really didn't see anything unusual, though. Whoever was doing this was pretty good at blending in. A few days went by, and there was nothing. Then one night, I suddenly saw flashing lights outside my window coming from the parking lot. I looked out and couldn't really tell what was going on, but only a few moments later, I got a call from the police telling me they had arrested the person who had been stalking me. They were in fact in my parking lot. They let me know that they had been surveilling my apartment and saw a man appearing to be watching my place several nights in a row, among other evidence. This time, he got out of his car and began walking towards my place, and then they were able to stop him. I had never seen this guy before and didn't know him. I learned to always pay attention to my surroundings because you never know who could be watching you. Purdue University Global. Apply now at purdueglobal.edu. Oh, I'm going to tell anything I thought it did. When I was a junior in high school, I took several advanced classes. I was trying to get into a really good college, and I was also studying for the ACT, so I knew that I would have to spend a lot of time studying. I liked to go to the public library to study after school, and some other times as well, because I worked a lot better there than at home. Plus, the library was on my way home from school. What I would typically do is find a desk or table, sit down, and do all my homework, and then study for a few hours. I preferred to go where there weren't many other people around me, because I could focus better with less distractions. No, the best part be. about studying at the library was that I had access to thousands of books, so if I was unsure of something, I could just get up and find a book about it. Well, one day, I was studying like any other after school. I had my notebook, several papers, and several books spread out at my table. The library was not too busy, which was typical, but there were a few other people here and there. I wanted to find a book about the topic that I was studying, and I left all of my things there and walked over to find it. I didn't have to go too far to find the book that I was looking for, and I was gone for maybe three or four minutes. When I came back though, everything at my table was all messed up. Some of my things were on the ground, and others were just not where they were originally. I was furious. I looked around and didn't see anybody nearby who was looking at me or were sitting in the immediate area. I walked around and found the closest person and asked them if they had seen somebody mess up my stuff. They looked confused and shook their head. I really didn't think they had done it or had seen anybody but I was so mad that I had to ask someone. I went back and picked up all my stuff and then went back to work. I stayed there for maybe 30 minutes or so longer. My mood was kind of ruined and I lost some focus. Eventually, I left and decided to just go home. When I got out to my car in the parking lot, my tires were slashed. Somebody had taken a sharp object to all four of them. I had no idea who would do something like this or why. I called my parents and they were there a short time later. Long story short, I was able to have my car fixed and reported the incident to the police. Unfortunately, they were never able to find the person who did it. This is disappointing to me to this day. I also didn't go back to the library, but just went straight home and studied there from then on. This was five years ago now, and I'm still just as puzzled by it. I don't know anybody who would do something like that, but I wish I could know who did it. Okay, well, the... Mm. This one is good. I like it. It's that last story, though. Um, I feel like uh, is there someone that you um like someone that either didn't like you or they dated you and you like either someone that you done something horrible to oh no, it has to be a really a sad thing uh, if they had like a girlfriend that or at least a boyfriend if they were that like 
they did them wrong or cheated on them. I, I, put, I would think it's that, but then I don't know. I don't think they'll go to that extreme, but then there are people that would go to that extreme and do something that horrible to someone. So it could be anyone. So, yeah. The second, the second story about the, um, the thing with the video, someone's videotaping someone or knowing what they do, like that, I'd be creeped out too. I wouldn't know what to do. I got, I would have like suspicions. I would kind of be looking around to see if they, if I seen that. And I feel like they said that they never seen that person in their life. So. That's the creepier part. How would they know what, they never seen them, unless they are like, hiding somewhere, or they knew you from something, and you just don't recognize them from anywhere. And yeah, it could, I don't know. First one, I, I don't know what, that lady was crazy, I gotta say, that lady was crazy as hell. I think she probably was schizophrenic, I don't know which, I probably, I probably, she probably was schizophrenic, if she's schizophrenic, then I'm sorry. Anyone is schizophrenic or has a, 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 a disability, I'm, it's not their fault, you shouldn't call them crazy, then, though, but if they don't have a disability and just like that, then, if they don't have a disability and they act like that, then, they're just crazy as hell. Something wrong. Something wrong. It's, they're crazy as hell. I don't know. But thank you for watching. Uh, give this video a like, comment, and subscribe if you would like to. And um, I hope to see y'all later, probably tomorrow or sometime next week. But anyways, um, thank you for watching. I'll see y'all later. I hope everyone, I hope every one of y'all had a good day today.